continuing with uh, solving linear equation and quadratic equation so this is a question where you have to solve this okay the question is to solve solve means to find the value of x find the value of x <coughs> okay that's the question now as it's a quadratic equation uh, you have two solutions now to understand this graphically uh, my graph is not exact so yeah if you graph this the the graph may look somewhat like this okay I don't know this may not be the exact so the question is basically to understand it graphically when does this this is the graph of 6x squared Okay, so the question is basically when does this graph become zero? That means when is it hitting the x axis? So, this is they're asking you this is where your graph will become zero. So, when does this become zero? That's the question. Okay, now, okay, now this is not an exact, I don't know how the graph would look like, but I know it's a parabola, and so as it's a parabola it is if it has two roots it may it, there are three possibilities for a quadratic it can have two roots it can have one root it or it can have no roots so i'm presuming this has two roots and that's why i drew i drew the graph like this so now this is called in this quadratic equation you can't simply put this in bracket you can though but it can be very daunting so uh, I'll go step by step. The first step, step one, multiply, multiply, I'll not write the coefficient of x squared, that is 6, and this number. So that's the first step. Multiply 6 and negative 3. Okay, so that's the first step. So you go 6 times negative 3. Now, why we have to do this, I may not be in a position to... Uh, I don't have the time, I can. Uh, but this, if you go through these steps, you can factorize this type of, mostly this type of equation. So 6 times 3 is negative 18. So the second step is step 2. Okay, so find two factors of negative 18, which adds up to which adds up to the 7. Now, where did they get the 7 from? This is this 7. So, there's a relation between this number, this number, and this number. That's the second step. So, you have to find two numbers, which when multiplying, you get negative 18. And, but when you add it, so I'll go through a very uh, trial and error. So, this is the step 3 which is very crucial I want two numbers which when you multiply you get plus 7 so I'll start with 1 times negative 18 is negative 18 but if you add sorry if you if you do 1 plus negative 18 if you do 1 plus negative 18 is negative 17 so this will not work Okay, so this option doesn't work. So let us take, say, 2 times, uh, okay, 2 times, I have to have the greater number positive, so, and the smaller number negative. Okay, so here, if we had made, I'll make a small eraser, I should have gone minus 1 times, 18 is minus 18, and, uh, the reason I take the smaller number as negative is because I want the answer to be positive. So you can't have a positive answer and say minus 1 plus 18 is plus 17. So this doesn't work. So next is 2 times 9 is minus 2 times 9 is minus 18. And if you add minus 2 plus 9, that does give me 7. So you can do give yourself a smiley face so this is your smiley face so this is is these are the two numbers that 
This is what I mean, the two factors, these two numbers, when you multiply, you get negative 18, and if you add them, you get 7. So the third step is, or the, or the fourth step is, step 4 is called split, split 7x to uh, minus 2x plus 9x. Okay, so this is the group. This is what we're going to do. We are going to split this 7x as minus 2x plus 9x. Okay, so that's nothing wrong there. And from there, you really start the factorization. So you've got 6x squared minus 2x plus 9x. What was the last number? Yeah, minus 3 equal to 0. So basically, if you look at this, your question, 6x squared plus 7x minus 3 and this, they are the same. Minus 2x plus 9x does give you minus 2x plus 9x does give you 7x. Okay, so I have not done anything fantastic here. I have not done any great thing. I only split the middle term. This is called splitting of middle term. Now I'm going to make two groups. So this is one group and this is the other group. Now what is common in the first group? Okay. What can you factor out? So yeah, look at the numbers first. So 6 and 2, I can factor out 2. And then look at the uh, x's. You've got x squared and an x here. You can take x out. So this will become, therefore, <coughs> for 2x times what is 6x squared? So if I'll say this is 3x, I need to put a minus 1. Always check at each step. 2x, 2x times 3x is 6x squared, and 2x times negative 1 is minus 2x. Now, what is common here? You don't have an x here. You only have numbers. So, 9 and 3, what's the common factor? So, I will, I say this 3 is a common factor. So, I can write 3x minus 1 is equal to 0. Now, I think you can see, yeah, this is 3x minus 1 here, and this is 3x minus 1 here. So can I factor the this whole bracket out? So yes, I can. So I can say 3x minus 1 is here and 3x minus 1 is here. So if you factor out this whole thing, so you'll have, you can write in the second bracket 2x plus 3 and that's equal to 0. Now, for if you have um, learning this for the first time, a good exercise would be to expand this. If you expand this, if you know expansion, you can, you should be getting this back. So I don't have the time that you can do it on your own. Now coming to the logical part, this is a number and this is a number. And product of two numbers is, again I'll repeat this, this is very important. There's no nothing wrong in repeating. If A times B is zero, then A has to be zero or B has to be zero. This is a wonderful argument you need to understand, okay, or you need to, this needs to sink in. So here I can say, if this is so, I can say 3x minus 1 is 0, and 2x plus 3 is 0. So here you can do without, again you can use logic, you can understand this has to be 1, okay, why? Because 1 minus 1 is 0. So where I can say therefore 3x is, should be 1, and now dividing this both side by 3, you can cancel the 3, so x is 1 third. And here you can say 2x has to be what to give you 0. So well, you say 2x has to be negative 3. And now if you divide this side by 2, you can divide this side by 2. So x is minus 3 over 2. So let me come back to the graph again. Now what does this mean graphically? x is one third or x is minus two three halves which is minus 1.5 okay so this means this uh, this is your minus this point is your minus 1.5 this is not drawn to scale and other what is one third so this point this point is your one third okay so if you draw it properly, it doesn't look to be uh, in scale. 
but the idea is when x is 1.5 or negative 1.5 and x is one third you get zero okay now you can put 1.5 into this equation and it will be zero and if you put one third into this it will be zero see you in the next video